Well, hello there. Kumusta po kayo? How are you? And thank you for tuning in to another edition of Paul de Guzman Presents Art. So we're just inside the Pendulum Gallery. You can see the pendulum going back and forth over there in the background. And uh, we're just here in downtown Vancouver, which is the ancestral territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations, to have a look at a show of paintings by local artist Hugh Kearney. So bear with me. We're going to go and have a look. It's just right out there. And so we'll go and see for ourselves. All right, stay tuned. So as I mentioned before, we're here to see the work of local artist Hugh Kearney. We're just gonna go and approach. Um, it's a beautiful sunny day today. Sometimes it's not really the best way to actually look at paintings, but you know what? I've been following Hugh Kearney's work for many, many years. And I'm so happy that he's having this show here at the Pendulum Gallery. The Pendulum Gallery is actually a very unusual gallery here in Vancouver because, here, I'm just going to go over here. Because it has a very relaxed vibe, you know? I mean, there's like a seating area over there. There's a cafe a little bit further on. And it's not like the typical gallery where, you know, people are going there and having a look at work and maybe you want to buy something, there's going to be gallery attendants. No, there aren't any, there aren't going to be any gallerinas here. But um, this particular piece that we're looking at, now that I've gotten through the diatribe of the Pendulum Gallery, um, is a rather large piece and the entire series is called Big Boy and His Adventures at the Circus. And I kind of think that this work of his is kind of autobiographical. And in a sense, you know, when you look at work by artists, they're almost always autobiographical anyway. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to tell, tell you a little bit more of what I know of Hugh Kearney as we go through the entire show. So this is a bit of an overview of the gallery. And as we go through and have a look at the works, I'll tell you that I've been following Hugh Kearney's work for many years now. Possibly more than 10 years. He lives in Vancouver now. But he was actually born in uh, Fredericton, New Brunswick. Which is, let's see now. It's east of the province of Quebec here in Canada. And um, particularly, he went to school at the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design in Halifax, which is nearby, you know, it pretty much shares a border with New Brunswick. And um, when he finished doing that, I think he went over to the west coast of British Columbia to live in Whistler for, I think, more than a decade. And then we're just gonna focus on the didactic panel here. I'm going to have this information in the uh, description area, so please refer to that if you want to read more, or you can pause this recording as we go through the uh, entire exhibition. So when he moved to Whistler, because he's, um, he's an avid skier, you know, he loves downhill skiing. Whenever I see his Facebook page, there's always like he's either in the mountains or he's vacationing somewhere in Europe, and he likes the outdoors. So they settled on Whistler for about, a, I guess, a dozen years. And then they decided to actually relocate over to New York, I mean Manhattan, where they stayed for about, I'd say, seven or eight years. And then after that time in New York, they decided to go back to uh, the Vancouver area and um, settle here. Now the interesting thing about the works that we're looking at right now, let me just have a look at this. Okay, so it's kind of funny that I'm trying to sort of like focus on this and trying to see if I can make it less crooked and then I was trying to sort of move it and it's actually crooked. <laughs> but anyways, um, just moving on along, we're just going to go on the other side here. And where was I? Oh yeah, yeah, we were talking about, I was talking about how he came back to uh, 
the West Coast after spending time in New York. And I just want to focus on these works because we're talking about an international system in New York, an internal art system in New York. And these particular works, you know, with a sort of like swirly um, drawings, kind of remind me a bit about Bryce Martin. And um, because Bryce, Bryce Martin is, a, um, is an artist who shows in New York. And I think seven years in New York, having a look at the art there tends to also influence a lot of the works that he's done. I mean, when you look at these works, it tends to sort of like look at West Coast modernism. And in particular, we're kind of like looking at the work of local artist B.C. Binning. That is um, Bertrand Charles Binning, who was an artist who um, taught at the uh, Vancouver, Vancouver School of Art, and uh, which is now actually uh, known as the MLK University of Art and Design. And his tenure here in Vancouver and teaching has influenced a lot of styles of work that's being produced in Vancouver in this area. Because um, a lot of the influences that BC Binning, or even this artist, Hugh Kearney, is looking at are kind of like a certain type of West Coast modernism that's in influenced by, let's say, uh, Alexander Calder or even Juan Moreau. And um, when you're looking at it and you realize that there's a lot of uh, like, uh, sensibility of the, um, the orbs, especially with uh, what Alexander Calder is known for with his mobiles. And it's kind of um, interesting too with Hugh Kearney's background because he is a he is First Nations artist from the Maliseet First Nations community, which is actually pretty much prevalent in the New Brunswick area. So I was doing some I was doing some uh, research about the Maliseet uh, First Nations, and um, it would seem that there's populations that are kind of like close to the border of the province of Quebec and um, in New Brunswick, and there's also some communities that are closer to the, um, the state of Maine in the United States. And I was talking with the artist during the opening a few days ago, and he did mention that a lot of these often um, sort of uh, cross hatchings that he has with a, within the paintings, like for example these, were the result of um, him growing up with his mother and his grandmother because they were basket weavers, basket makers. <clears throat> and that entire sort of like craft tradition within the Maliseet in New Brunswick, in Canada, is actually quite, um, it's actually quite significant. When I was also doing some research on the Maliseet, I also discovered some sort of like uh, cloth or embroidery or beading works that are predominantly produce in the state of Maine in the United States. So there's that sense of um, almost a sense of the beads. You know, when I look at this work, for example, there's this sense of perhaps the beads or the orbs going in and sort of like forming or formulating something. For me, it's kind of like a cell structure or even sort of like cells trying to sort of like do their job in the body. But there's something very beautifully organic with this type of West Coast modernism because um, especially with the introduction of these um, sort of like uh, patterns that he's been putting in as part of his First Nations, um, as part of his First Nations identity. I mean, he became status First Nations in 2017 and to explain a little bit about it. It's really more about registering your First Nation status with the federal government. Then you become status and then you become sort of like um, entitled to certain things like tax exemptions and stuff. But it's very difficult to sort of like achieve because you have to have some sort of like um, proof that you are from a First Nations, um, from a First Nations family. And when he was growing up, he had confessed to me that it was difficult for him to, um, 
to actually acknowledge his First Nations upbringing because he looks white and um, and there are certain sort of like um, forces in society that tends to sort of like look at you and try and determine for themselves whether you are actually First Nations or not. They're called pretendians. And it's really quite difficult to sort of go through that entire sensibility through society and trying to prove whether you are or you're not, whether you're sort of like stealing somebody's culture or not. So third, there's a sense about it that's kind of really difficult for him. But when he, but when he received his status um, from the federal government, he became braver and can actually sort of like at least justify for other people that he is registered with the federal government of Canada. It's also kind of interesting to see these little, you see these little lines here? I was actually doing a little bit of um, uh, research regarding the Maliseet in, um, in the, uh, state of, um, the state of Maine, and that motif comes up quite often in a lot of it, the embroidery work that we see and that they are still producing. And when you look at these, these paintings, they kind of like, I don't know, they're, they're very joyous paintings to me. I really like looking at them. They almost kind of like feel like candy to me. And the artist is a really excellent colorist as well. Look at this. Let's focus on that. And the setting for the Pendulum Gallery is really perfect because there's a sense of just you and the paintings and nobody else is gonna go and sort of like bother you and you can just go at your own pace in terms of this entire sort of exhibition. So you're, if you're ever in downtown Vancouver, you drop by the Pendulum Gallery, which is at 885 West, he uh, West Georgia Street. And I'll have all that information down in the, um, in the description area. They're usually open every day except Sunday because it's an office building. So as an office building, they're usually open Monday to Friday as well as Saturdays. So I think I'm going to end on that note. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, you can like this video. You can share it in social media channels. You can also consider subscribing to the channel. It's free for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for your engagement and for watching this video. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. I hope you have a great day and I hope art informs your life. Focus on that and we'll end on it. I'll see you later. Goodbye.